What is good Tesla family, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the one and only Tesla stock and what you should be looking out for the future. I'm also going to break down why on earth we have a very big week ahead of us. We have some major earnings coming out, we have FOMC and we also have some important data coming out near the end of the week. So I'm going to break down what this data is, how this may affect the overall market, why on earth this will likely lead in my opinion to a big reversal in the markets by the middle to end of this week. And how all of this may affect Tesla's share price for the week and for tomorrow as I give you guys my price predictions. Now, before I break anything down, before I get into any more details about any of the information, I do have to mention a couple of things real quick. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Webull link down below and into the description. If you sign up for Webull, the link down below. And deposit any amount of money into the account, whether it's $1 or $100, it's up to you. You're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $3,000. And the best part is, any could be a free Tesla share. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just two days, so check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. Tesla was up 11% for the day on Friday. We have some very nice momentum on our MACD on the bigger time frames, and that suggests to me that Tesla is likely going to see a bullish continuation. I do believe Tesla has some more room to continue pushing, uh, especially when we make such big moves on like a on a Friday. I do believe it's going to keep fighting for a big push. But even though this is likely to happen, I want to note that what tends to happen, especially before some very big events, is hedging. And I believe lots of institutions are going to start loading up on some, some puts because what happens is when they start doing this, the market makers are going to be on the other end of that deal. So if we start buying puts, the market makers are essentially in a position where they end up selling shares to hedge. That's part of the reason why buying puts does lead to some potential downside. And I do believe there's going to be a slowdown by the time we get to Tuesday. Right, I, I think Monday is going to be pretty bullish. Tuesday is going to be a bit of a slowdown day. And then Wednesday and beyond will likely see a big reversal, in my opinion. So I'm going to break down exactly why, what big events are coming out, and what you have to watch for. To start us off, I want to note that there isn't really too much really big data that's coming out in terms of uh, the economy for the time being, at least for this specifically. Uh, we do have on Thursday initial jobless claims, and then we also have the unemployment rate data coming out for Friday. But the bigger things coming out are going to be both earnings and FOMC. To start us off, for earnings, okay, we have SoFi. We have other big ones for Monday, not as huge as Wednesday or Thursday, though. Uh, for Tuesday, we have McDonald's, we have UPS, ExxonMobil, and AMD. This is going to be a very important one. Uh, I think Tuesday is pretty big, but Wednesday and Thursday are going to be massive as we have Meta, we have Aflac, we also have Peloton and T-Mobile for Wednesday. And then Thursday has Amazon, Apple, Ford, Alphabet, aka Google, and Starbucks and, uh, and Sony. We have a bunch of big ones. So it's going to be very important for the markets. Many people are not actually expecting Apple to do as well on this one. I would be very careful for that. But before we have the really huge earnings, we also have FOMC on February 1st on Wednesday. This is going to be massive in my opinion because Jerome Powell is going to be speaking and announcing the new rate hike. I believe it's unlikely, although it's possible, it's still unlikely he's going to give us 50 basis points. But if that ends up happening, if Jerome Powell comes out and he says, oh, I'm going to raise the federal funds rate by another 50 basis points, the market is going to take a big hit. Tesla is going to come down hard. NEO is going to come down hard. SPX, NASDAQ, they're all going to take a huge hit if the Fed ends up doing that. But once again, I think it's unlikely. However, I think what's most likely going to happen is this. I predict the Fed's going to give us 25 basis points, but the market's going to react to what Jerome Powell ends up saying. And I believe that this whole rally in the market is just, it's more of a squeeze and it's not really fundamentally based. It's not because of like massive share buybacks. It's not because we had a killer earnings. I mean, Tesla did, but the majority of earnings were pretty much mixed. We had some misses. We also had some beats. 
It's also going to depend on Apple later on, but I don't think that this was a super strong earnings cycle and the next ones coming up may not be as good either because once again, guys, the rate hike effects, they, they take quite a while to actually show in our economy. So I want to note to everyone that I believe Jerome Powell is going to be hawkish. I believe he's going to cause the market to reverse and come down. I believe he, the Fed's intent is to bring some pain now so that the pain is not as crazy once we actually get closer to a potential recession. And I really believe it's most likely going to come. Elon Musk did mention to everyone it's going to be comparable to that of 2009. He also mentioned that uh, the Fed may be over tightening in his opinion. And that's why people have to be very ready for what's about to come. I want to note that even though the data is not out yet, and I will make another video about this later, we saw energy actually spike up. We saw uh, egg prices spike up. We saw we're seeing copper go up, not to mention the lumber and many other things. In my opinion, there's an increased probability that CPI is going to be a little bit high in the next two weeks when the data comes out for the month of January. Okay, I will make another video with way more data in the future, hopefully, but Right now, I just want to note that. And Jerome Powell knows this. He knows CPI is not necessarily just going to you know, tank all the way down and it's just going to be done with. He knows it could be cyclical. He knows there could be instances where it starts to go up, especially starting this new year. So because of that, he is incentivized to be very stern, in my opinion. And you might think that, oh, inflation is coming down. And, and that's the problem with this rally, in my opinion. I was showing you guys in the past the divergences between smart money and dumb money. I don't want to talk too much about that today. I've been talking about that all week. But what's happening is this is very similar to what happened during these like August rallies, right? I'll show you what the August rally ended up looking like. People were looking at the markets back in like August and they were seeing this big pump. People thought the market was about to go to all time highs. And we ended up getting this big rejection, a very big one, especially when with the Fed started coming out being hawkish, especially because of the CPI reports that were coming out, the market ended up getting a big reversal when people least expected it. And I believe we're in a very similar state. The market is super greedy right now. We're near the extreme levels of greed. People are believing that SPY is about to break all-time highs, especially because we're very cl close to the Golden Cross. It doesn't matter if we even get the Golden Cross. There have been many times in the past where that's happened and the market still came down because of a bad piece of news, all right? And this, this rally is because of a short squeeze, right? That's the reason why the market is pumping like this. It's a, it's a huge short squeeze. People were like over leveraged on the put side. They were just buying puts like crazy. If too many people go in one direction, the market tends to want to do the opposite. And right now people are not loading up on puts like before. People are starting to buy calls. They're thinking the market's going to explode. We'll just have to wait and see on that. But I, I personally believe that once I go over the, the, the charts, you're going to see why I believe the market's going to reverse. First off, I, I do believe the FOMC is going to play a big role in that. I think Powell's going to rug pull us. That's just my honest opinion. And even if that's not the biggest thing, the earnings might not be that good for Amazon, Apple, and Alphabet, especially Apple after what's going on in China. I'd be very careful with this. Now, when it comes to Tesla in particular, I want to note some very important things. For the time being, Tesla is still strong. Look at the price pairs ratio, big push to the upside, showing lots of relative strength. It's actually outperforming SPY and QQQ. Very, very incredible week for Tesla. And once again, like I said, this momentum is likely going to continue. Tesla should continue to push up. But as strong as Tesla is, even Tesla cannot run forever when we start to see the Fed come. Remember what I said about Elon Musk yesterday. He told everyone that, look, the Fed could still be hawkish. The Fed could still hurt the valuations of companies all over the United States. Elon Musk was warning us about that, right? Was he specifically warning us just about this one FOMC meeting? The answer is no. He think, he tends to think like really far into the future. He's talking about the potential recession and and, and things like that. But the bottom line is, we're not necessarily out of the water just yet. So Wolf Research, Wells Fargo, Wedbush, Citigroup, they're all bullish on Tesla. They're all saying it's going to go up. They're awesome. And in my opinion, that's awesome. It's going to likely push up in the future, but I'm still going to be very cautious once I show you guys a couple of other things. Uh, the short interest on Tesla has just exploded. The shorts are piling into Tesla, especially on Friday. Uh, we're at the highest short interest we've seen 
in the past four months. That's absolutely insane. The shorts are just piling in. They're getting ready for something very big. Now, what's good about Tesla, and this is why Tesla still has potential to continue pushing, the volume is at 300 plus million, the highest volume we've seen in a very long time. So lots of volume for Tesla. Lots of buyers are coming in. Everyone is buying, even Kathy Wood was. But even if she was buying, I would still be very careful. Now, the short volume percentage, guys, it's going to the moon. The shorts are piling in. They're buying into Tesla. They're not necessarily liking it pushing up so so fast and lots of these shorts did get squeezed but i but i also believe that even more are going to keep trying to pile in and try to drag this thing down so be very careful the market is expecting the fed to give us 25 basis points if they surprise us with 50 like i said before the market's going to get rug pulled i don't think that's going to happen but i do believe jerome powell's hawkish tone is going to lead to some downside that's just my opinion so why am i talking about the market coming down I believe when you look at the charts, you're going to notice there's this big bearish divergence that's developing on SPY right here on the RSI. You can see right here, we're not necessarily at the same highs as before, and yet the RSI is a lot more oversold. I also want to note the fact that we're seeing the same thing on the MACD. And then finally, on the one hour time frame, there's another big divergence that's forming right over here. This thing has been on an uptrend, but the RSI is not showing the same thing at these different peaks. Once again, suggesting the market's going to likely get a bit of a reversal. On top of that, the implied volatility of the S&P 500 is relatively low. This tells me that when you look at the VIX, uh, we're also getting on the daily a bullish divergence right here you can see it right about here another bullish divergence that is developing suggesting a big reversal is going to come on the vix maybe after fomc maybe after apple's earnings i do believe this suggests that the market's going to come down pretty hard very soon and that in turn is going to have a big effect on tesla because once again guys you have to remember okay even though tesla's being shorted and even though lots of shorts have been squeezed the way the market moves does tend to affect Tesla. For 90% of the last 12 months, Tesla has moved with the market. Maybe like 95% of the time, we we kind of like uh, underperformed it recently. That was because of Elon Musk selling and some bad news. But as of right now, Tesla is not the only one pumping. The whole market has been pumping. Okay, and that that that's why it's very important to remember if the market reverses hard, Tesla could reverse hard too. Be very, very careful. These shorts are relentless sometimes. I also want to note that on the NASDAQ, we have a potential. We did invalidate this head and shoulders I was talking about, but we are respecting. Uh, we came very close to the 200 EMA and we are respecting a rising wedge right now. Be very careful. We have lots of gaps down in these uh, different areas. They could get filled as well. On the QQQ, I'm seeing the exact same thing essentially it's like a rising wedge like pattern and we are going to likely see this thing reaching those extremities i want to note the fact that we do have a divergence that's forming right here we're almost oversold on the rsi i do think the qqq might try to fight a little bit higher because of tesla but i do believe we're very close to the top and we are going to get a reversal very soon the dollar it's pretty flat as of right now. It's still stuck between that 100 to 101 area. It still is respecting a falling wedge-like pattern. I believe that this is actually going to see a big reversal over the next couple of weeks. It's kind of overdue, and maybe the Fed is going to trigger that. I do believe it's very, very possible. I also believe that the increased volatility in the markets could actually help the 10-year yield continue to push up. So as we start to see the yields push up, not going to be the best for the stocks out there. We formed a nice double bottom right here. Let me bring back my drawings to show you. Nice double bottom has formed, and we are going to likely see this push up, which could be bearish for the stock market, right? Very likely, we're going to see something like that very, very soon. And finally, uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about would be, I think, Apple. Apple, in my opinion, is near another very extreme level. I wanted to note the fact that for Apple, we're pushing up very well. We broke some major resistance, but, but we are approaching, we're getting very close to that 148 to 150 zone. That has been some very interesting resistance. I want everyone to be very careful right there because if Apple does get a reversal, it's once again not going to be the best for the stock market. I also want to note we're actually seeing another hidden bearish divergence on Apple on its RSI. 
that once again is suggesting the market could start to come down because Apple is so big, it will affect the whole market. What, is, what does all of this tell me about Tesla, okay? I believe that on the weekly, where is it? On the weekly on Tesla, we're basically respecting, we had this giant head and shoulders that formed, all right? And right now, the head and shoulders is right here. We have the left shoulder, the head, and then the right shoulder. We're actually very close to this uh, previous support, which is now going to be resistance. This like 180 to about 183 area. We're going to see some heavy resistance there. I do believe that Tesla could break out of that, but we're going to have to see how we perform once we touch the 200 EMA, this 183 area. Remember to watch that because we do have some major resistance right over there. Tesla already got a bit of a rejection right there once we hit it. Now, what I want to talk about is what Tesla is likely going to do in my opinion. I believe Tesla has lots of momentum, like I said earlier. I don't think we're done just yet. I believe Tesla is going to try to push up on Monday. We're going to continue with the push and we're going to fight for this 183, 182.5-ish area between right here. If we break it, I could see this thing going for 185 and maybe even 190. But I want to note the shorts are continuing to pile in, okay? I also want to note that for Monday, even though I could see Tesla try to push up, we might see some a little bit of chop here and there. But overall, it could actually close green. But for Tuesday, we might see the market pull back a bit. That's my prediction because we might see more and more puts being bought. And the excessive puts being bought, especially for SPX, for the market could slow things down. I do think Tesla is going to hold a lot better than the market because of so many buyers. But I want to note that as a warning. And once we get into FOMC, everything can start to come down. And that's why you need to be very, very careful. What am I predicting for Tesla? For tomorrow, I'm anticipating that we might try to push and break this level right here. We might try to come down first, maybe to like one... 74 ish maybe form kind of like a head and shoulders like formation try to get another push up and then it might be like a fake out and it might just keep trying to fight and fight and fight with the market and try to break this area and then what could happen is we might try to keep pushing for like 185 to 190 it could definitely come if we get enough momentum especially because this thing has so much volume so many buyers they're gonna fight but i don't expect it to be as strong as it was during the previous week so what I'm thinking is maybe we try to peek around here. I do believe Tesla's very close to its top. And then I believe that after that, it's going to depend heavily on FOMC. And I, I honestly think it's going to be, lead to a big reversal. I do think Tesla's going to come down after FOMC. I think the whole market is going to come down. I want to note something that's not the best about this rally. And that's the fact that, yes, Tesla might have very strong guidance, but the shorts... There's, they, they bring this, this level of manipulation that could affect the entire market, and you have to be prepared for that. Tesla has a lot of gaps, okay? The stock runs way too fast, and we have like four or five gaps that form. Not the best of things. We have a gap way down here in the 160s. We have another gap in the 150s. We have another one in the 140s. We have, let me see, another one all the way down here in the 130s. We have another one in the 120s. We have one in the 110s. We formed way too many gaps in such a short period of time. It's very unlikely that all these gaps will remain unfilled forever. It's going to likely come down in the future. And I believe FOMC might be the start of it coming down to these levels. Okay, the shorts are just piling in like crazy. Tesla's at the highest short interest we've seen in a very, very long time. I would be very careful right here. Okay. It's not to say that the shorts will just get destroyed forever. Uh, is that possible? Yes. If the market keeps rallying, yes, it is possible for the shorts to get destroyed again. But like I said before, when Jerome Powell comes out, I personally believe he's going to be a big hawk. I, I think he's going to bring the markets down. I think the Fed wants to cause pain to the stock market. We actually heard them say things the market did not like. And this whole rally is just reminding me of a the Fed is bluffing rally. It's not really backed by fundamentals. And I believe that it's not the strongest rally when you actually think about what's backing it up. 
And once the Fed comes out and they reestablish their dominance and they let everyone know that they're not done hiking, they're going to raise the terminal rate maybe above 5%, not at 5% specifically. The market may not like that. And that's why I believe Tesla will likely come down. So anyways, once again, the last thing. Tomorrow, I expect Tesla to maybe trade a little sideways and push it up uh, later during the day because sometimes Tesla takes some time to push up. It doesn't always push up immediately. We might be able to get to this, the higher 180s to 185-ish area, like around here. And we, we're going to likely establish a top very soon. I believe that's what Tesla is going to do. And then eventually, it's going to start coming down to these levels. We have 175 to watch for, the 169 to 170 zone. We have 165. We have the gaps down here. Make sure you watch these very carefully because it's going to be a fight. And I also believe that on Tuesday, we're more likely to have downside for the markets, especially for Tesla. It could be switched around, maybe Monday's downside and Tuesday's green, but it doesn't matter, guys. I, I'm predicting that the market's going to hold up okay tomorrow. And then for Tuesday, we see downside. And then for Wednesday and beyond, we see even more downside. That's what I'm seeing. And I believe that will have a big effect on Tesla. Now, even though I did mention that Tesla could get a nice push to this area right here, it is heavy resistance. And I do believe it has lots of momentum. If you're a bear, you're, there is a possible head and shoulders that could be forming. Like it comes down here and forms the right shoulder. This is the left shoulder. This is the head and it are already topped. I don't really know about that. I don't really believe that Tesla already topped. It seems like it has more momentum, so it should push to this area right here. But the bottom line is, guys, in my opinion, I don't consider this the best zone to be buying in because I believe there's a lot of downside to come. That's just my honest opinion. I would be very careful on Tesla. Could this thing push up? Yes, I believe it's going to push up. Like I said, guys, I, I do believe it has some more room to go. But once the market reverses, I do see more downside during the middle to later days of the week. Anyways, thank you all for listening. Uh, please have a great rest of the day. I do apologize if I made this video a little bit too long. I just want to prepare everyone, okay, that I do believe the market's in the topping process. I do believe there is going to be downside. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy some football. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Tesla to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright despite all of these different contingencies. And peace out.